Hey guys, welcome back to Ag with Emma. This video we've got part two with Zach Johnson. We're gonna cover his equipment tour and a little bit about grain bins. I think the grain dryer as well. I can't remember, but grain bins and dryers are a big thing in Minnesota and the Midwest. So it's cool stuff to learn about because in Idaho, we have grain bins, but like not to the scale that they do in Minnesota. So I loved learning about all this stuff. So let's get to it. Hope you learned something. Great hair day here in Minnesota. Anyway, we're going to give you a good old equipment tour, I think is what's going on. Yeah, well, of the I mean, goods. we're just going to do a, a general tour and this general. is this. So this is our cold shed, cold storage shed. It's cold in here. It is still in here, but it's out of the wind. So it's not yeah. so bad. Action. Action. Go. Right. <laughs> That's the 1971 Minneapolis Moline G750. Pretty rare, it's the same exact thing as an Oliver 1655. My dad bought this in early 80s, maybe late 70s. Planted everything with it the first few years that he was up here. We still own it. Dad actually mentioned one time that he should sell it because they're rare and they're worth something. Oh. I talked him out of it though, because if he sells it, then I gotta buy it. I'm not letting that leave. Uh, 8295R. Dad, this is this is one of Dad's tractors he just bought. We're gonna put it on like the, it'll probably run the roller. It'll probably run uh, uh, a, a fertilizer tank and side dress bar that we have coming from J&M this year that we've never run before. Uh, 60 feet wide, so we're gonna run that and see how that goes. Truck, we've got three of these. Got a lot of grain to haul. Corn for, for those not on corn farms, the big bins, if you're if you're from uh, if you're from areas where there's a lot of small grains, people constantly talk about the size of the bins that we have. But out here where we have corn, I mean, we're making 200 bushels an acre. Or, you know, some places are a lot better than that. So we need a lot of storage. We're, we run a, a lot of semi loads every year. 95, 70 RT. This is like uh, this is our big horse. Um, we, out, we have another 9570, but it's on tires, so it's the articulate. It's parked back there. The difference between tracks and tires. Tires are nice for some things, for, for a lot of things, but tracks really minimize compaction. And what we like about these RTs is they're so maneuverable. They, I mean, they steer like a skid loader, so you can just twist them in and out of corners and stuff. Once you get used to the, running one of these, I, I really like them. I mean, I don't, this is what I want to be in is the RTs. Oh, so you're a track guy. I'm a track guy. That's all right, tracks I, are I cool. Mean, yeah, tires definitely have their place. Obviously we got stuff on tires also. This is dad's machine here. We'll run this, uh, well, we ran it on both crops this year because we needed two machines on corn. Normally we can't keep up if we have two machines on corn because we don't have enough trucks or we don't have a fast enough grain dryer. So we'll just run the S780, which is my machine on corn. But this year we, we needed them both. So this is kind of the second machine. It helps us get through soybeans a little faster. Uh, it was our main machine a couple of years ago, but we upgraded with the 780. So. Right now we've kind of got them both because dad's got his and I've got mine and we farm together, but we have separate lines of machinery. That'll make sense to some of the farmers out there. Um, headers, corn. That's a corn header right there, the ones with the... With the points, yep. We've got the points tipped up mostly for, for storage, really. Cleaning out and, and storage, they'll go down when we harvest. Soybean headers back there. It's a draper header, platform header. Uh, same thing as like, a, Macdon header um, or, a, or a honeybee header. A lot of guys, that's what they'll run on like small grains, wheat. I believe canola uses the same header. So everybody's seen those big platform header with the, with the draper belts. That's what that is. That's what we use for soybeans. This is the other 9570. So it's the same horsepower on it. It's just, it's in a big articulate frame. It, it'll do a lot. It'll do the same jobs. It's just, it's on tires. They have their place, you know, there are times when tires are pretty nice, but dad's machine, my machine, one of those deals, they'll do kind of the same jobs. You've got the seed tender back there, J&M seed tender. Got some dogs that just walk around. Yeah, they'll try to trick you. <laughs> this is White Lightning. Oh. We've had this service truck for many years. Why is it called White Lightning? Well, because it's white and it just makes sense. Speed. <laughs> Being a millennial farmer right now. I am. Instagram farmer. I am. I'm catching, <laughs> I'm catching up on... He's got to use his trendy hashtags. <laughs> Make sure you go use the hashtag FBN delivers and you can get a free hoodie or a call with the millennial farmer. I'm promoting for him. You're better I should get than paid. Me. <gasps> Do you guys hire? <laughs> now we're going to go back outside. We're done with our Instagram farming things. 
back out in the cold. This morning I was actually with Randy, Zach's friend, master pipe player, and he taught me all about a grain dryer. If you can even hear this because it's windy and I have an iPhone, peasant stuff. <laughs> but he taught me all about grain dryers, just the basic process, but I didn't get it on video. And he now we're gonna get Millennial Farmer to explain grain explain dryers. Grain dryers. I'll start from the beginning. Here, I'll, I'll go to this side. So Okay, gotta flip the camera. Hold flip on, it, flip iPhone it. problem. Action. Truck comes in, parks right here. I didn't stage this, it just happened to be parked here. Uh, and underneath those, there's a couple mats under the truck. So we'll dump the grain into two different underground pits uh, that actually will fit about a truckload in those pits. And then they automatically, that grain gets augered up out of the pits and into the grain lake. And then from there, that's a the grain top, lake, right? That is the grain lake. Yep, it takes it about 100 feet in the air, and then it distributes it through the distributor to wherever you need to send it. So, like in the fall when we're doing corn and we need to dry corn, it will priority feed, meaning it will send it to the grain dryer first. If the grain dryer is full and the dryer doesn't need any corn, it overflows into what we call the holding tanks, which are the two smaller tanks there that we will fill with wet grain, and then. Like during the night, throughout the night, it will pull, because we're not harvesting at night, so it'll pull out of the holding tanks, the wet tanks, and it'll run those through the grain dryer. Overnight. Overnight. From there, when it leaves the grain dryer, it comes out the back of the grain dryer, and this big blower right here uses air to actually blow it through the pipes. There's a distributor back there as well for the pipes, so we can pick whichever bin we want it to go to. Um, there's one bin right now that we can't hit because it's too far away and we have never built the pipes to get to it um, So there's one we can't hit but the rest of them we can basically send it to whichever bin we want it to If we're doing say we're harvesting soybeans and we're not running it through the grain dryer We can distribute it to any of the four middle bins there that are connected by a, a cross auger up at the top So we can, it can go straight from the field into the pits and run up top and down into one of the bins so that's the basic idea. The reason for holding your grain and drying your own grain is because it's much cheaper to dry your own grain than it is to try and sell the elevator wet corn because they deduct a lot more for it than what it would cost you to actually dry it yourself. And then the reason we store it is for marketing reasons. It opens it up so that you know you, you, you aren't just committed to one uh, buyer. So you can say, I've got the grain here. You're essentially open to any market at any time because because it's not sold to anyone specific. There's not a specific elevator that already has it or anything like that. Now you can have contracts in place to forward that ahead of time to specific locations, or you can do like what we do with most of ours, which is to hedge it on the board. So you've got a position on the board, um, crops that we don't even have planted yet. We are about half sold for next year because we've hedged them on the board. So we've got it locked in at a certain price. That lets us be flexible with it because then we can put it in our own bins and sell it when we want it, but we're we're secure at the price that we sold it on the board for, minus or plus the basis. That's a lot of fancy market stuff, and it's okay if you don't understand that. Yes, that is okay if you don't understand that. Don't feel stupid. So y'all might be watching this and thinking Minnesota's ugly, because it is in the winter. It it is in the winter, <laughs> and very more specifically, very much so in March. Yeah, like we have dirty snow and just like it's just like. Y'all all know how winter works, unless you're from somewhere warm and you enjoy your life. <laughs> so here's a grain bin that we can go in that the sweep has run about halfway around the power sweep. So there is some corn in it, but it's down pretty close to the floor. <laughs> the inside of a grain bin. There's the top. Essentially, yeah. really, I mean, I would think exactly like you think it might look like. Yeah. It is a huge steel space. There's just, that's the grain. So there it is. This is corn. This is corn. And One. corn, like, you know, dry corn, field corn, qualifies as grain. So when I think of grain, I think of wheat sometimes, you know, sure. just wheat. But there it is. One thing on like a grain bin that you can't see that a lot of people maybe don't think of is the floor. Okay. So underneath the grain, you can see the perforated holes, the perforations. There is about a foot of space underneath the floor between, between this and the concrete. And there's actually fans outside that blow and pressurize that floor. So that's why you, all these like that's why. Dust, so there's actually yeah. wind coming in the fan outside yeah. right now, and it's finding the easy spot to blow the air through. 
Yeah. So these aren't bugs flying around. It's just no, that is just we... corn dust. Bees wings, we call them. Bees wings. Like the bees knees. Doesn't make sense why you call it that. Just that. It makes no sense at all. It's just that. <laughs> bees right. knees? Mm -hmm. And no that one is obviously to help control the temperature and get fresh air through the corn so we can make sure there aren't hot spots and you don't get any rot. Because what what, what's bad when it rots? Uh, well, if it spoils, it's worth nothing. You've got to get it out of there and it'll grow quickly. So obviously, if, if you've got a grain bin like this that's full, you've got close to close to 60,000 bushels in here. Yes. Times right now, you know, six, seven dollars a bushel. You do not want to lose all that grain. And so, six to seven dollars a bushel is high. Very, 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 very high. high. His, like historic highs. Yeah. Um, so you, you do, do not want to lose that grain because nobody's going to take that. Essentially at that point, it is waste and you'll spread it on the field and it basically becomes fertilizer. Mm -hmm. Bad deal. Not what you want. <laughs> so there's a lot of strategicness to a grain bin. Strategicness. Strategicness. Big words today. Good English. <laughs> All right, so I think that's about it. Unless you have anything else to add about Minnesota. I, uh, uh, like fun Minnesota facts? Oh yeah, sure, fun Minnesota facts. Oh, you betcha. We're uh, number one in turkey production. We don't do anything on our farm to help with that, but Minnesota is. That's, that's, a, that's fun a fun fact. fact. Yes. We also have 43,560 square feet in an acre. Did you hear that? <laughs> we are going to wrap it up. Go check out Millennial Farmer on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. TikTok. He has TikTok too, even yeah, though he's millennial. He's closer to a homework. You can't even hear this. <laughs> it's windy. Um, but yeah, you can go learn more about Minnesota agriculture, what he does, and he shares a lot of good stuff. He's one of the one of the first big dudes. A lot of good stuff yeah. and a lot of completely useless stuff. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so check me out on all your other platforms. Podcast every Tuesday. Ag with Emma everywhere. We'll catch you on the next video.